Welcome back to theheart.org. Uh, my name is Professor Tony Gushek. I'm at the University Hospital of Leicester, UK. And uh, again, I'm here at, uh, in Munich at uh, ESC 2012 and uh, have the privilege of talking to some of the PIs who are presented in the hotline and late breaking sessions. And uh, absolute privilege to have with me uh, Scott Solomon from Boston. And uh, he uh, uh, was the PI of the Paramount trial. And uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about it. So, Scott, welcome. Thank and you. Uh, tell us a little bit about this uh, Paramount trial and why you set it up, what's the background, what came into your head, and all that. So, uh, this is a study that we did in patients with heart failure and preserved ejection fraction. And as you know, this is a disorder uh, that accounts for about half of the patients with heart failure uh, and for which there is no therapy that has currently been recommended, that currently can be recommended that reduces morbidity or mortality in this condition. Have there been previous studies in this condition? And perhaps there, you'd like to just to set the background of There what? have been. Um, there have been studies of uh, calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and ARBs. Some of the trials that you might think of include Charm Preserve, yeah. I Preserve, as some of the larger ones. Uh, but to date, none of them has proven uh, that there, there's any therapy that actually can lower uh, the uh, morbidity or mortality in, in this population. But you have been testing a new agent or an agent used in a different setting? It is a, it is a brand new agent. It's called LCZ696. Okay, it'll get a proper uh, name. It will hopefully space. get a proper <laughs> name at some point. Uh, this is an agent that is an angiotensin receptor neprilysin inhibitor. Okay. And what that means yep. is that it is a, uh, a single compound that has two molecular moieties. One is an angiotensin receptor blocker, valsartan. And which the, has been tested. Which has been tested. And, and shown to be. And shown to be beneficial in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Yeah. Uh, it's never been tested in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Okay. And the other molecular moiety is this neprilysin inhibitor. Now, neprilysin is the enzyme that is responsible for the breakdown of the natriuretic peptides. Okay. So by inhibiting that enzyme, you actually cause an augmentation of the endogenous natriuretic peptide system. So this is a non-renin angiotensin system? It's a non-renin angiotensin yeah. system. It actually augments the naturally occurring natriuretic peptides okay. like ANP, BNP, and CNP. And that's been shown in other studies that definitely that's its, its mechanism. Definitely that is the mechanism of, of action of the neprilysin yeah. portion of this molecule. So the molecule is ingested and then breaks up into these two separate um, uh, components which then uh, do their thing. One on the renin angiotensin system at the AT1 receptor and one on the uh, neprilysin. Why is it combined in the first place? If it then breaks up and acts. Well, uh, it's it's actually a very novel way of uh, uh, of um, creating a, a compound. But the m the most important reason is that it's you can't really give neprilysin inhibition uh, inhibitor uh, without also blocking the renin angiotensin okay. system. And the reason is that neprilysin also uh, is somewhat responsible for the breakdown of angiotensin. Nice. So you need to give, uh, you need to be able to do both things. There okay. was a drug uh, that isn't, uh, isn't available anymore, but had been tested called omipatrolat, you may remember that, and that was a neprilysin inhibitor, ACE inhibitor. Uh, okay. But it had side effects that um, couldn't overcome those. So you're testing this new combined moiety uh, in patients with uh, heart failure with uh, preserved ejection preserved fraction. Ejection. How many patients? And so what, what we did is we, we randomized 301 patients with heart failure and preserved ejection fraction. They had to have ejection fraction over 45% to get in. They had to have elevated NT pro BNP, which right. we know is a marker of adverse uh, outcome in this patient population. Signs and, and symptoms. Um, and they had to have heart failure. Defined by? Signs and symptoms, and again, elevation in NT pro BNP. So we randomized 301 of these patients to receive either this compound, LCZ696, or Valsartan. 
Uh, so you had a positive control. We had a positive control. That's and the reason we had a positive control is what we were really interested in is the additional yeah, uh, benefit that we see from the neprilysin inhibition. We used a dose of Valsartan that is equivalent to the dose of Valsartan that you get when you take this LCZ696. So we randomized these patients. We followed them for the primary endpoint, which is reduction in nt P, for 12 weeks, and then continued following them for another 24 weeks to look at changes in cardiac structure and function, uh, symptoms like New York Heart Association class, and safety and tolerability. Okay, so this is a, this is a, a robust study, powered on the basis of? The primary endpoint, nt P. Okay, so it's a sort of a surrogate for it clinical... It is absolutely surrogate. a surrogate endpoint trial. Which is a sort um, quite nice because it's sort of, it, it's not, it's a sort of pilot mechanistic study that will allow, if it's positive, exactly. to go on to a pivotal... Exactly. Start. So this, this is a, a relatively the right way around. new it's agent. Working the mechanism out first. So, so we, we found found that uh, after 12 weeks of therapy, we very significantly reduced nt P in the patients receiving LCZ-696 compared to those receiving Valsartan. At 36 weeks of therapy, we found uh, significant reductions in left atrial volume, and the left atrial volume, of course, we know is a yeah. very important predictor of adverse events in this patients was on with heart failure. This is by echocardiography. Was it know. a core lab echo? Core lab. Okay, yep. so really rigid, good. Uh, and we also found that these patients had improvement in New York Heart Association class. At 36 weeks? At 36 weeks. So uh, that was a, a very important finding. Um, side effects, adverse effects? Adverse effects, this was a very well tolerated okay. uh, drug. There were fewer overall serious adverse events or, or any kind of adverse events uh, within the LCZ arm than within the Valsartan arm. And in fact, when we looked at the adverse events of interest like hypotension, yeah. hyperkalemia, uh, we saw that there were no difference between the two arms, if anything, numerically fewer in the LCZ arm. So, so that's really all good. Um, any caveats, any concerns, worries well, about uh, what, 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 you know, if you were sitting where I'm sitting, what would you be asking yourself about you know, the, the, the downsides of the study? Obviously it's a small study, obviously it's a surrogate study, but was there anything that you felt uh, could have been better, or any weaknesses of the study? Well, you can always look through the retrospectoscope, but I think the biggest um, cautionary note is that this is a hypothesis generating yeah. study. And this is not even a drug that is currently available on the market, uh, but it needs to be um, uh, tested in a much larger population of this sort yeah. if we want to show that we can actually reduce morbidity and mortality in patients with heart failure and preserved ejection fraction. I will say there is a, uh, a heart failure with reduced ejection fraction study with the being same done agent? with this agent currently in 8,000 patients. Okay. So we're getting a tremendous amount of uh, experience in the low EF population, but what we need to do now is uh, an outcomes trial in the in the preserved EF population. Are you expecting agent. it to work better than standard treatment? Yeah in the low ejection fraction population? Are there well, it's being compared to enalapril, okay. uh, oh. so, uh, which is obviously standard of care treatment in heart failure, and the hope is that this will become, uh, this, this type of therapy will become uh, a new standard in heart failure. Uh, so we're, we're almost fully enrolled in that trial. It's called Paradigm. Paradigm. Okay. And we'll see in a few years what those so results are. So you now got to have another P acronym for the, the big clinical trial, which I presume you're planning now? Currently under discussion. Um, okay. No decisions have yet been made, and I suspect it, will, it will be a P trial. Yes. A P, a P trial, which may be appropriate. Um, so very important to do because the, what we have is really uh, tasty uh, indications that this may be a very useful agent in this group. Just finally, just to educate me, what percentage of patients with heart failure have 
preserved ejection fraction? Between 33 and about 50%. Okay, so yeah, not a small It is a lot of patients. Okay, so well that's fantastic. I've really enjoyed it and I've, I've learned quite a lot. So thank you very much indeed for coming along well, and giving up you. your time. Real pleasure. Thank you very much and I hope you've enjoyed the program.